All right, this is a final update on the bioponic setup. It's been a while since I've updated or put any videos up, but um, as you can see, very successful project. I got lots of stuff growing: beetroots, kale, Asian salad greens, shallots, watercress, uh, cucumbers, all sorts of stuff. Also included a um, NFT system in it or setup, which is growing lots of really good strawberries now. As you can see, we've got a little food tunnel going on here. Really good strawberries, small, sweet, not big and watery and sour like the ones you buy at the shops for five bucks a punnet. We're basically at the moment getting a punnet every two to three days out of this. It's a bit bare over here. I've got cabbages planted in there. So basically now all I'm doing is spreading seeds in the in the blanks, in the empty pl places and letting it grow. And you can see a few little seedlings there, I think. Seedlings everywhere. So basically now it's just a matter of eating it and putting more seeds in. And that's it really, and topping up the water. I'm gonna set up an automatic fill system that, um, and get another tank that will fill up on off the roof of the greenhouse and, and using a float valve to automatically top up the, uh, the reservoir with water. At the moment I'm gonna do it with a hose sort of once a week, which is a bit of a pain, but it's a bit more automation I can do here. I also wanna put a, uh, retractable shade cloth on top of the um, the greenhouse because in summertime it just gets really hot in here it's summer at the moment so you can see some wilting but um, plants do fine still they just don't look as good when it gets really hot the NFT well everything is all running off a single hundred watt uh, pump I've just got a, a, an extra line here going down under the ground, pumping water up, and it's flowing in this end, working its way all the way around, and then draining into the final grow bed all the, uh, back down there. In the end, that T-piece on the end, I've got a stand pipe that's adjustable. I can just put different length stand pipes in there that adjust the, the water level in the um, in the NFT pipes, but that's really only necessary when you're first starting uh, small seedlings out when they've got um, only tiny root systems. But um, let's have a look at one of these. There's ridiculous amounts of roots growing in here. I mean, it's hard to pull it out, but you can sort of see that there, I think, hopefully. Anyway, bulk roots in there. There's no no worries about them getting uh, not getting enough water. Just want to talk quickly about what I feed the system. Um, these are two worm farms I've had going. Well, this one's been going for about ten years. That one's about three or four years old now. All off the original worms. I've never added new worms to it, um, even though I've had a few mass deaths of worms when it's got too hot um, but that's all I've never had that happen now because I know what to do but basically I'll just uh, with the bioponic system probably once every two weeks two to three weeks I'll simply fill up these buckets of water uh, and pour them through and recollect all the the runoff that basically just filters through the whole all the layers of the worm farm and, uh, all, and then I get highly nutrient rich and bacteria rich um, fertilised natural organic uh, water that I then put into the, um, the bioponic system. And this is simply fed from all of our scraps as you can see, lots of bananas and whatever, mangoes and avocados and whatever. That's it, so basically that's the main fertiliser food source. I also add um, rock dust but I only do that probably once every three months or so and then once every two to three weeks 
um, I'll just piss in the system as well. That's just enough to keep the nitrates up. You really only need a tiny amount. And occasionally I'll put some sea sole, like seaweed extract in, and that is it. It's very little what I put in. It seems that um, over time the, uh, the bacteria and nutrients build up in the system, and I actually now try to um, limit as much what I put in there so that um, a common problem with the aquaponic systems is um, build up of organic matter inside the grow beds so plus the grow beds have got worms going through them anyway because I'm continually putting uh, worm juice in there's always a few worms that end up in there and they help to manage that so in conclusion um, I'm never going to add fish to this system because I don't really eat a lot of fish. We do eat a bit, but not enough to deal with all the hassles of keeping fish. This is basically a set and forget system. I shut it off for 10 hours of a night time, which you couldn't do with um, if there was fish in there, mainly because I'm, my pump is creating the aeration as well as pumping water. You could leave a, an air stone running if you wanted to, but... Um, as I've said before, I wanted to make this system as simple and uh, reliable as possible. And taking fish out of the equation is uh, makes it, you know, much more reliable and easy to manage. And as you can see, you really don't need fish to grow veggies. Um, particularly, you know, as I've just explained with what I add to the system, it's just waste, waste products basically turns it into beautiful organic food so I mean this has worked so well that I basically want to dig up my um, you know traditional in-ground garden and replace it with bioponic systems but costs a bit of money and you know it's I'll stick with the dirt for a while and this is certainly producing a lot of food we're eating out of this nearly every day so um, it's not producing all our food but um, it's certainly uh, supplementing it quite well but um, yeah I'm definitely a fan of bioponics as opposed to aquaponics not that I don't like aquaponics but that's just me alright any questions put them in the comments or send me a message on this Google Plus or whatever the hell it is now um, and I'll answer, I'm ha quite happy to answer your questions